Hi Gay, um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this um, video with me and this interview with me. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself, but just by way of introduction to anybody who is watching this, the reason I asked you to do a, um, an interview with me is your name kept coming up when I kept asking customers uh, where they had heard about Velvet Cloud or who had recommended Velvet Cloud uh, Sheep's Yogurt to them. And the name Gay Godkin kept coming up, so uh, that's really, I suppose, how we got in touch, and that's over, what, two years ago. Uh, so hence, we've arrived at the point where we're doing this interview. But I'll let you explain what you do, if you don't mind, Gay, and then maybe I'll, I'll come back and ask a few questions that our customers keep asking us. Okay. Um, okay, Ashling. Well, basically what I do is I'm involved with personalised nutrition, primarily, and I also do a lot of work with corporate nutrition. Now, due to COVID-19, um, all of the one-to-one -one consultations are online and the same with corporate, it's Zoom, WebEx, um, Microsoft Teams, etc. So I suppose for the purpose of our chat today, we'll focus in on the personalised nutrition. OK, so basically that is people who are referred to me by their GP or their consultant or they come to me because somebody else um, had success um, sorting their conditions out due to diet. Uh, so, you know, I would typically have people coming to see me with a lot, lot of gut health issues. Uh, so, you're, you know, from your IBS to your colitis, dyspepsia, reflux, um, diverticular disease, maybe even things just, you know, constipation, diarrhea, those kind of gut irregularities. Um, fertility would be another one. And then you've people who don't want to go down the medication route when it comes to age-related conditions. So arthritis, um, cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, a lot of people with type 2 diabetes and a lot, an increased number of people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And then, of course, right, okay. people come to me for weight management. OK, you mentioned gut health, um, Gay, and this is something I'm, I'm trying to educate myself on, because what I read is that fermented foods like our yogurt is good for gut health. But there's just so much data out there and science out there, and it could be quite complicated. And I'm reading that they're calling the gut the second or the third brain, is it, or the second brain? Anyway, all this kind of stuff and terminology and the microbiome and all that. Could you, in layman's language, would you be able to tell us why your gut health, well, what does it mean, number one, gut health and number two why it's so important yeah it's you are um everything you said is correct ashling it is very complicated it is novel it is new information is you know studies are coming out hourly on this difficult to keep up with it all i guess you know where the the idea of the second brain comes when a fetus is developing inside of a mother's womb it's the same tissue that makes the brain as makes the gut. So you have a piece of tissue, one yeah. half, uh, you know, it splits in two, one half becomes the brain, the other half becomes the gut. So the endothelial lining of the gut is very important. Um, it's not even just about the gut because it's, oh, you know, it's from your mouth to your anus. So in terms of the microflora in your mouth, hugely, hugely important and even more so now with cardiovascular disease and all the way down to your colon. So it's a bit like your fingerprint. We are all individuals. We all have different families of microbes in there. Remember these guys are on the planet long before human beings had legs and could stand up and walk. Which guys, these microbes, is it? Oh yeah, these, these and microbes. what are microbes, again, just for plebs who aren't, well, plebs like they, me who are web scientists? Yeah, you, and you don't need to get into the whole ins and outs, right. you know, the, the trillions and trillions of the, those guys that are in there. There's probably over 10 trillion. That number could change tomorrow. Um, look, there are archaea, viruses, fungi, bacteria, all sorts of, it's, it's a big collection. In fact, it's the biggest ecosystem in, in, on the planet, bigger than the sun, moon and the stars. Um, and why but, do we need them or why, why are they important? Or what's... Well, as I said, they, we, it's a symbiotic relationship. They need us and we need them. 
Right. So, you know, we need them so much to um, survive. So they inoculate um, our gut, our skin. Every single part of our body is covered in trillions of these guys. All right. Okay. And it's, as you said, it's evolving. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot more to understand about it. But I suppose in simplistic terms, the name of the game is to keep the good guys up and the bad guys down. Okay. And that's very simplistic. Um, a, a big part of this, and I guess where we are with now with COVID, is that approximately 70% of your immune system re resides in your gut. Now think okay. about you know, COVID is a disease of the immune system, systemic inflammation and all of that. And of course, people are at greater risk that have this high systemic inflammation. So imperative that they're looking at what they're eating because these microbes in our gut are educating our immune system. So of course, food is medicine when it comes to all of this. So does what you eat affect the type of microbes in your gut? Absolutely. Okay. As I say to people, when you sit down, you're never dining alone. You've always got to consider your gut family. OK, and, and depending on what you eat, you can increase good guys or you could increase bad guys. Is that correct? Absolutely. So, okay. you know, <clears throat> this, you know, very simplistic thing of eating protein, fats and carbohydrates, and that's all we need to kind of you know, calculate is utter nonsense. You look at food okay, as a gift. Why is that? Nature. Well, because food is very complicated. It is made up of chemicals, you know, plant chemicals, yeah. phytochemicals, all sorts of chemicals. And each one of us responds and reacts to what we eat very differently. Okay. So, so if there, there isn't a way <laughs> then, if we all respond very differently, my next question was going to be, so what should we eat to make sure that we have good, healthy guts and therefore boost our immune system? Is that too generalistic a question then? It's very general, generalized. However, there's a, there is a couple of caveats to this. So what we do know from research is lactobacilli, for example, lactic acid, any of those bacteria they have been shown, and there's a lot of research into Bulgarius and lactobacilli and bifidos and all of those guys. They have been shown to increase the production of the healthy microflora in the gut. Okay. And um, we know that research has been going on since the late 1800s, the 1920s, big research there. So, yes, we do need to eat those kind of Foods. Now, you're going to get them in prebiotic foods, which feed what's in there. So if you have a good balance of lactobacilli mm. and bifidobacteria and you eat prebiotic foods, mm. that they're going to multiply because these these guys, they actually, some of these guys actually only live for 20 minutes. They eat each other. There's all sorts of cannibalism going on in there. Right. So your gut changes every day. Right. So, you know, it's never too late to change your, your diet. But I suppose from your perspective, Ashling, and why I like your product in particular, um, is you have the really good, you have four live cultures in there. Okay. And the difference between taking a probiotic in a powder form or in a supplement, well, number one, the European Food Safety Authority Mm -hmm. um, doesn't allow any of them to make a health claim because when you take them in as a supplement form, um, there's no science available to show as yet that they get to the gut and do what it says on the tin. Now, okay. that may just be that they haven't got the right diagnostics as yet, but what has been shown going back to the 1920s is that when you put these kind of uh, live probiotics into a substrate or a food culture such as milk, that they change the structure. The body recognizes milk, mm. and fermented milk, because yeah. it knows what that is. And they are far more efficacious. So they do get to the gut and they do increase the population of good guys. 
So the science ha is, has shown or studies have shown that if you take the certain ones of these good guys uh, in milk or in fermented products, it, it's more efficient or whatever it is, it's better. It's, yeah? more, it's, it's efficacious, you know, they, they can look at um, the transit time. Remember that your, your mouth needs this, your tummy needs this, your small intestine, your large intestine. It's not just, you know, a, a fast train to the gut. So okay. all along it's negotiating different pHs. Um, yes, that's what the science is showing. Okay, and would you mind explaining to me then why you recommend to some of your clients velvet, you know, sheep's milk yogurt rather than cow's milk yogurt, natural cow's milk yogurt? Why yeah, well, I guess, you know, and you're very aware of this, that we're living in a world where there's far more allergic reactions, if you like. So there's many reasons for this. And overuse of antibiotics is probably the biggest issue here, where broad spectrum antibiotics have been prescribed for many, many years and um, do a lot of damage to the gut. And if you're somebody that's had, you know, particularly in my own case, tonsillitis during childhood, you know, antibiotics every six weeks and then going on to be an asthmatic, which is now reversed. Um, in, in my case, my microflora were destroyed. So um, why do I recommend sheets? Well, in, in my own case, um, I had a intolerance to cow's milk. So I, I mean, I was I was off that twenty five years, and then I discovered sheep's products, which weren't really kind of in vogue or been yeah, you know, yeah exactly or available. I started with some sheep's cheese, and I gradually worked myself up to taking a uh, velvet cloud. And when I found your product, I was like, oh my god, my life's going to be normal. And I use it for desserts. I use it for making tiramisu. I use it for savory foods. Um, so I guess I tested it on myself. And then a lot of people would come to see me with food intolerances. And uh, they say to me, I'm lactose intolerant. And I'm like, you're actually most Irish people are not lactose intolerant. You're intolerant to the type of protein in the cow's milk. Uh -huh. So I, I try them on your product. And what I find... Sorry. What I find is I get about 85% of these people um, tolerate it really well. When they don't tolerate cow, is it? Yes. So now, 15% of them won't tolerate correct. either. Either. And, and tell me, is the protein is different then? That's what yeah, the, the, pro the protein is different. Uh, and you know what, Ashling? It comes yeah. down to a lot of things. Maybe eventually we will find out that all of these intolerances can be fixed by modulating the bacteria. It may be the four bacteria that are in your product. You don't know enough about that yet, and I don't know enough about that yet. But suffice to say, from what the feedback that I get from people, mm. I don't like people, you know, not having some form of dairy in their diet, particularly the fermented form. Right. And, you know, taking out a really good food such as cheese and yogurt, you know, I'd, if you have to do it, you have to do it. Mm. But certainly I would always try with elimination and rather than using various different types of plant milks, which have meant, you know, lots of ingredients in there that I wouldn't want them having. Yeah. I always start with the sheep. Okay, interesting. Really, really interesting. Okay, so I don't want to keep you too long. Thanks a million for your time. Just last thing, have you any examples of, um, without obviously revealing confidentialities, but clients that you've worked with and how you've helped them? Because again, I'm only starting on this education journey, but I'm reading things like that your gut health can affect your 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 brain health and your mental health, uh, your physical health. It can um, help you with cholesterol, all this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm only starting the journey, but have you any sort of case study examples you can point to or things that often happen with clients as a result of um, you helping them with their diet or what they eat? Yeah, well, I've probably too many um, yeah. and I do have video testimonials and there's lots of testimonials on my website, but I never get a chance to put and, them up. And I give suppose. it a plug now. What, what's your website? Oh, www.gaygodkin.ie. Perfect. Sorry, just yeah. that plug. So go on. Um, so, 
Yeah, look, lots of people, and if you go there and read the reviews, um, who have come to see me who've been really, really ill. Um, and we start looking at the gut and, you know, I, I put them on gut rest and then try to kind of get in maybe 20 foods and, you know, increase um, the diversity of foods that people are eating. But it's, it's funny you should say that. I got a beautiful, um, I don't know if you can see there, thank you card from a lady who came to see me with IBS and a byproduct of that, she, she told me she had chronic depression. And it was just lovely because uh, this came in just before Christmas. So it's kind of fresh in my mind, I guess. Um, so yeah, she just says, thank you for your energy and your um, thought, etc. And the changes in my outlook, I'm astounded. They're so significant. My mood has lifted. Now it's taken time, but after 40 something years of battling mood disorder and IBS, I think four months is just the blink of an eyelid. I am calm and I now don't have the stress. Who would have thought diet could do this to me? How very little we know about the workings of our amazing bodies. It has been a challenging task and I want to thank you for your hard words and easy laughter. And I guess um, that what I would say, that's not to say that everybody, you know, with anxiety and depression can be cured overnight by changing their diet. That's her personal experience. And I guess what I'd say is what you get out of this journey, what you put into it. Right. Okay. And just one thing, um, you know, when it comes back to recommending Velvet Cloud again, Ashling, um, not to just be using it as a medicine because food should be enjoyed. Right. So um, what I would say also is that apart from its uh, digestibility, um, it has a lovely mouthfeel. It's because of its fat content. There's really, really beautiful fats, very different fats. I'm not going to get into this today. It's too scientific. But it's the satiety. Right. And knowing that there's a lot of protein in there and knowing that protein is digestible. But there's no point in me recommending it if people say to me, oh, I couldn't eat that. Yeah. You know, right. it's so not an endurance. Right. If you're sick, you don't want to recommend, say to people, oh, you have to take this. You know, that's yeah. not the case. And I, and I suppose from my own point of view, like I probably order six every two months or sorry, every two weeks. And um, yeah, I just eat it every day and um, it's fabulous. It's just, you know, as I say, life is difficult. So we need to eat things we enjoy. Brilliant. You're a star. So if people are really interested in this, where, where would you recommend they go to sort of read up more about it? Is there any books or any websites or any individuals or experts that you Well, follow? I mean, I, I'm following yeah, myself, but just to... um, I start with people, you know, um, trying to kind of, obviously, when they come to see me for my one, the one to one, which is an hour. And then after the sec on the second visit, I have my slides and I go, I educate them okay. using Zoom and slides on the gut. And we, we do all that, th you know, maybe two or three sessions. Depending on how much they want to get into it, I'd probably recommend something like the Psychobiotic Revolution. Yeah. Again, depending on people's level of intelligence and how much they really want. Yeah, Some they people want. are happy enough to, you know, do a couple of slideshows with myself and they're happy enough to go off. They settle on their diet and, you know, their conditions um, disappear. Um, recently, I had another lady, cholesterol went from 7.7 .7 to 5.1 in nine weeks. And that, that would be kind of my usual. And that's just um, a diet. Oh, absolutely. That's just a changing what people are eating. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would be kind of a, a typical um, responder. Um, and as I said, it's not endurance, Ashling. You yeah. know, the product has the creamy taste. You know, everything. Our tongue receptors are signaling our, to our brain what we're eating. Yeah. So, okay. you know, 
it's it life is tough enough without having yeah. to endure it and well, it's a beautiful product. thank you so presumably we're going to hear a lot more about this this has to maybe i'm naive but this has to be a whole growing area if you if you can change your health and improve your health through what you eat rather than through drugs presumably this is going to become more and more mainstream and more and more to the fore the difficulty is there is no real way of testing food on people. So how, if we were to do a study on Velvet Cloud, you'd have to lock them into a room for a week or two, eat nothing, drink. Everybody is so different. So most of it is observational, if you like. Mm. Um, the other problem is at the moment, health is using only the medical model. Yeah. And doctors are busy. See, they're not trained in nutrition. They have, you know, they have their own workload. We'll always have drugs, that's for sure. Yeah. But um, until um, the nutritionists and the doctors, that marriage needs to happen. Yeah. They need to well, learn well, to embrace yeah. this. Yeah, exactly. But you know, that would add much more years to their training. And how would they condense it down? Um, so, yeah, it's, we're going to use devices. Artificial intelligence will be involved. There'll be apps involved. So personalized nutrition is the future of medicine. And, yeah. and I think I wouldn't be the only person saying that. Yeah, no, it's, that's what I'm beginning to read. And it's, it's really fascinating. Listen, thanks a million for your time. You're really good. It was gaygodcon.ie if people want to have a look. Another plug for yourself. Um, and thank you so much for giving us your time. You're fantastic. Thanks, Gay. You're welcome. My pleasure.